Hey guys, we're going to start factoring today. So this is kind of a review of what you've done if you were in foundations. Um, I think you did do a little bit of this in 8th grade. So I'm going to undo distributing. That's what factoring means. You're reversing the distributing. So let's review distributing first of all. So look, remember, you have an exponent of 1 here and here. So when you distribute... 3 times 2 is 6, and now you have to add those exponents. So 6a squared. Then 3a times 1 just keeps it as 3a. So what I'm going to do is, once you identify the GCF, remember GCF stands for the greatest common factor, you can factor it out. So I'm doing reverse distributing. So factoring is the exact opposite of distributing. So distributing means you are multiplying, whereas factoring means you are dividing. So again, if you look... Do you see how this answer here is the same as this problem here? What I am looking to do is I'm trying to find the greatest common factor. That means, if you look, what is the biggest number that you can divide into both 6 and 3? The biggest number you can divide into both, without getting a decimal, is a 3. Then you look at your exponents. Who's smaller? 2 or 1? Obviously the 1 is smaller, so 3a. So that means your GCF is a 3a. So now you're going to divide. This GCF that you took out, it goes in front of your parentheses. Now we're going to divide and put the answer inside. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. Remember, you have to subtract these exponents. So a squared divided by a is just a. If you want to write to the first, you can. Then there's a plus. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And here, 1 minus 1 is 0. That means your a's cancel out. So this is what your answers are going to look like today. So if you look, do you see how this answer was the same as our original problem when we distributed? That's why I said that Factoring is the exact opposite of distributing. Now, when you're taking out the GCF, here's what you have to remember. You're taking out the biggest number that goes into all terms, but you are taking out the smallest exponent, or the lowest exponent. That's how you find a GCF. The biggest number that will divide into all the terms, but your lowest exponent. All right, so here's your list. When factoring a GCF, first you have to identify the GCF. Then you're going to write that GCF in front of the parentheses. Next, you're going to divide each term from the question by your GCF. Then you're going to write the answers you get when dividing in your parentheses. Remember, you have to put your GCF in front of your parentheses. And then your answer goes inside. Don't forget about your positive and negative signs. They stay in between the terms where they started. So here's what I'm talking about. Ooh, hear my kids screaming in the background? Awesome. All right, so you're going to look here at your numbers. The biggest number that you can divide into both 10 and 30 without getting a decimal is 10. So I'm going to divide these both by 10. Then ask yourself, who's smaller, 10 to the 4th or 10 to the 3rd? 10 to the 3rd is smaller. So I'm going to divide out a 10 to the 3rd. So my GCF is 10D to the 3rd. So remember, 
your GCF goes in front of your parentheses. Now you're going to divide and you're going to write what you have left. So 10 divided by 10 is 1. Now remember, you're going to subtract these exponents. 4 minus 3 is 1, so you can write a d, or d to the first. Plus, 30 divided by 10 is 3. Now subtract this. 3 minus 3 is 0, so those cancel out. So this is your final answer. All right, next, we're going to look for the next GCF. So you're looking at all three of your numbers, 12, 18, and 42. Now, if I try a 12, 18 divided by 12 is going to give me a decimal. So I know that 12 is too big. So the next number, next highest number that divides into 12, I know is 6. 6 will divide into all of these. So 6 is going to be the biggest number that I can divide into all three of these numbers. Now look, who's smaller? 4, 3, or 2. Obviously, this one is the smallest. So here's my GCF. 6D squared. So remember, your GCF is going to go in front of parentheses. And now we're going to divide, and we're going to write what we have left. So we're going to divide the numbers. We're going to subtract the exponents. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. 4 minus 2 is still 2. Now let's do the next one. 42 divided by 6 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. And now look, 2 minus 2 is 0, so those are gone. So this would be your final answer. And if you want to check your work, remember, you can just distribute. All right, so let's check out the back now. All right, on the back. So we're looking for a GCF again. So I'm looking between the two numbers. Well, this one's pretty easy. If they're both 16, then obviously your GCF is 16. That's the biggest number you can divide into them. Now, look for your smallest exponent. Who's smaller, 4 or 1? Obviously the 1. So I'm going to keep 16D as my GCF. So remember, your GCF goes in front of your parentheses, and now we're going to divide. We're dividing the numbers, we're subtracting our exponents. 16 divided by 16 is 1. Remember, there's a 1 on here, so we subtract your exponents. 4 minus 1 is 3, so d to the third. Okay, now, 16 divided by 16 is 1. This is a 1 on the exponent. 1 minus 1 is 0, so those cancel out. So here's your final answer. Remember, if you start with two terms up here, you must end with two terms in here. That's why we need that plus one number. All right, number five. So I'm looking for the biggest number I can divide into all three of these. Now, six does not divide into 10 or 21. So obviously, six is too big. The next number that divides into six is three. Three does not divide into 10, so I can't use that. The next number that divides into 6 is 2. Well, 2 doesn't divide into 21. So the only number that divides into all of them is a 1. So there's really no number I can take out. So now, who's smaller? d to the 5th, d to the 3rd, or d squared? d squared is the smallest. So here is my GCF. You can put a 1 there if you want. So it goes in front of our parentheses. So now remember, I started with three terms. I have to end with three terms. 6 divided by 1 is 6. Subtract your exponents. 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay, the next one. 10 divided by 1 is 10. Subtract your exponents. 3 minus 2 is 1, or d to the first. Okay, negative 21 divided by 1 is negative 21. 2 minus 2 is 0, so those d's are gone. So here's your final answer. 
Again, I started with three terms. I have to end with three terms. So let's check out number six now. I'm looking for the biggest number I can divide into these. So you start looking at the smallest one. The smallest one is four. Four divides into all of those. So I know four would be my GCF. Now look, who's smaller? Five, four, or three? Three is the smallest. So D to the third is what I'm taking out. So my GCF is 4D to the third. So I'm going to put it in front of my parentheses. And now we're going to divide. 20 divided by 4 is 5. That's a 5. Now subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2, or D squared. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Now subtract your exponents. 4 minus 3 is 1, or D to the first. Okay, let's divide again. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. Now look, 3 minus 3, those are gone. It's 0, so no Ds on there. So there's your final answer. And if you distribute that 4D cubed, you should get this original question back right here. All right, number 7. GCF between 18 and 12. Obviously, 12 does not divide into 18. So the next number that would divide into 12 would be 6. 6 goes into 18. So let's divide everything by 6. And then who's smaller, D to the third or D? D is smaller. So we're going to take out a 6D. So my GCF is 6D. All right, let's divide. 18 divided by 6 is 3. There's a 1 on here. So when we subtract, 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, 12 divided by 6 is 2. 1 minus 1, those cancel each other out. So no Ds. There's your final answer. All right, number 8. GCF, well, 2, obviously, would be the only number you could divide those by. And then who's smaller, V or V? Well, they're both V, so I'm obviously going to take out a V. Then who's smaller, M squared or M? Obviously, an M is smaller than M squared. So my GCF is 2VM. So 2VM is going to go in front of my parentheses. All right, divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now remember, the exponents on your Vs are 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so there's no V I'm going to write there. There's a 1 here. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's M to the first. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. You have 1s on the Vs, so 1 minus 1 is 0. They're gone. You got 1s on the Ms. 1 minus 1 is 0. The Ms are gone. So here's your final answer. Okay, and then number 9. Again, I have to find a number that I can divide by all of these. I'm going to start with 24. 24 definitely does not go into 116, so I'm going to have to go down my list. Um, the next number from 24, I think, is 12. 116 divided by 12. Nope, you get a decimal. All right, so now let's try 8. 116 divided by 8. Nope, you get a decimal. Keep going down. Try 6. 116 divided by 6. Nope, you get a decimal. All right, let's try 4. 4 works. I can divide these all by 4 without getting a decimal. Then, who's smaller, r cubed, r squared, or r? r is the smallest. So my GCF is going to be 4r. So 4r in front of parentheses. All right, let's divide. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Remember, there's a 1 here. So subtract your exponents. 3 minus 1 is 2, so r squared. Next one. 116 divided by 4 is 29. There's a 1 here, so 2 minus 1 is 1, or r to the first. Negative 168 divided by 4 is negative 42. Now these are both 1s. 1 minus 1 is 0. That means your r's are gone, so here's your final answer. So that's what all your answers are going to look like. Your GCF goes in front of your parentheses, and then you divide your numbers, subtract your exponents. Now you can do practice at 7.6 on page 42.